Roughly four years ago, I made a video talking about how brutalism and maximalism are about to shake everything up. I knew at that time that it was gonna change the design industry and it was gonna change my life, the things that I'm creating every day, but I had no idea that it was gonna shift culture as a whole. My name is Cody Garrow and I'm a designer with a keen fascination for trends. It's probably worth saying that nothing I'm about to talk to you about is scientific. It's all observation. Brutalism and maximalism, what, what are they? What do they mean? Brutalism is a 50s architectural term that refers to raw concrete. It's sort of a what you see is what you get mentality, just sincere raw form. Maximalism is simply the opposite of minimalism. Where minimalism would give us few options of color, texture, shape, Maximalism gives us more of those than we could ever handle. Now that we know what they are, let's talk about why they're here. Why are these two words at the top of the design industry? And also, why are we receiving them with open arms? I don't know about you, but I just crave it. Let's start by clarifying that all design eras are really just regurgitated old eras that we're applying new thinking and technology to, right? Although minimalism didn't make its debut in 2000, it still dominated that design era from 2000 until 2020. For the last 20 years, minimalism has had an influence on us, maybe even more so than we realize. It's actually trained our eye to crave perfection. When viewing architecture, web design, print design, photography, we craved symmetry, white space, clean, sharp edges, Perfection. Side note, remember the days when we would all pull the things out of our pockets, set them on a table, organize them perfectly, and then take a photo of it? That's a cringy moment. That is a cringy moment. It would be unfortunate, but fine, if the side effects of minimalism stopped there, if we just craved a certain style. But as we're continuing to learn more and more and more, design plays a major role not just in the way things feel or the experience of something, but actually the way that we live, the way that we communicate and the way we feel about ourselves. The side effects of minimalism totally plagued the creator economy of that time. I know we didn't have a word for it back then. That desire for perfection led to only showcasing your best photos from vacation, the best angle of your body, the best side of your emotions. We've all seen it. No one felt that they had permission to let it all hang out. It was like we were all just sweeping all that wasn't pleasant under the rug. But this is where we reach a transition. After a certain number of people, brands, leaders started to crumble under this insane amount of pressure, people started to speak out. People started to reveal what was going on behind the curtain. And you might be thinking that those people appeared as heroes, but genuinely, it wasn't that cool to be vulnerable last decade. When I think back, most of the time, it seemed like we were looking at those people that were honest as like a hurt puppy. Or the opposite, maybe we looked at them as if they snapped and they went off the deep end. We were just so used to seeing these people of power or influence looking perfect that it took us a little bit of time to get used to seeing them look a little bit weak. Anyways. This is where design enters this conversation. Gosh, I love designers and artists. For better or worse, artists, designers, and the like are, are some of the first people to resist cultural norms. When the world is telling us to be perfect, artists will rebel. It's really cool that artists work this way because long before everyone realized that they wanted to stop striving for perfection, I'm talking like culture as a whole, Artists were already there, and they were already creating a look and feel for those people that were ready to make the transition. Leading artists were using brutalism and maximalism in increasing amounts from 2010 to 2020. We saw it in web design, hairstyles, runway fashion, photography, etc. Most of the stuff created would be considered hideous or atrocious to the average person. But over time, it became the design identity for so many influential people that we view as real or authentic today. This look gave people an out from that last era. 
it genuinely gave people an opportunity to be vulnerable without looking like a sick puppy. This new brutalist and maximalist look, if you embraced it, you could, with dignity, be authentic. This is why the world is so refreshed by Billie Eilish. And I'll throw Emma Chamberlain in there too. She's a YouTuber. They make looking bad look good. Okay, I've put some time into this, and I think the best way to describe the transition would be to say that we're going from sexy to gaudy. One of the leading buzzwords right now is granny chic. One of the craziest things is that in the last era, the, the pinnacle of architectural design would have been like an Apple store. I feel like that's a really good representation. Well, this new era, the new thing is gonna be your grandma's house. Like that's replacing the Apple store. Yeah. We, we want these tiny spaces filled to the brim with knickknacks and fancy plates hung on the wall. Why are they hung on the wall? Still don't know, but we want them. My grandma loved roosters. I should get some roosters in my studio. Okay, but you, you get my point, right? This is all gaudy. Like your grandma's house is gaudy, typically. Unless you have a, like a really minimalistic grandma, which tell her she's going out of style for me. Anyways, there are both positives and negatives to this new era that we're stepping into. I think the positive is very obvious. Like when has our mental health been more in the limelight than right now? And, and it's gonna continue to be for the next however many years, I don't know. And that's just incredible. The fact that people can embrace their mental health, the good and the bad, and let that only enhance their brand is just a phenomenal thing. The one downside that I do see about this era, and I think this is gonna be the reason that we jump to the next era eventually, is people are gonna figure out that they can put effort into making things look effortless. Creators like Mr. Beast and Emma Chamberlain are, are taking direct action to remain raw. For example, Mr. Beast refuses to move up to 1080, above 1080p. Like he's, he doesn't want anything to do with 4K. Emma Chamberlain has downgraded her camera to like a 90s camcorder. People on TikTok, that's another conversation. We're seeing a lot of reactions and like staging things that are, that are clearly fake. I don't think there's anything wrong with showmanship. And I think that those creators are very smart for doing that. But what happens when everybody catches on to this thing and everybody starts putting out authentic stuff and then we're just surrounded by real and raw authenticity and only half of it's real. Only the half of it is actually true. When we get so good at creating this sort of content that it just inevitably gets a little gray. So why am I even making this video? I don't know. I think for the most part, because I'm super interested in it, I love watching all of this unfold and I just document it into myself. I don't usually share it. But I think it's also a little bit of a warning sign to anybody, to any of the fellow designers or artists out there that, that might be blindsided by this. Like if you are somebody that has, has really found a niche over the last era, over the last decade that you're just creating constantly, you might get totally blindsided by this new era that we're Okay, I, I know I've been going on some tangents here. Um, let me just tell you why I'm making this video and then, then we can end it. I'm making this video because I, I just wanna bring to the surface how valuable design is. I'm so proud to be a designer and I think, I don't know, I mean, I just, I always wanna make sure that my life has purpose and my career has purpose, but I'm just continually reminded over and over again what a major influence I can have on the world. The other reason is because I think that often we're blindsided by these kind of changes and or they just happen without us really noticing what's going on. And so I thought it'd be kinda of cool to like just pause, take a look. We went from liking this taking everything out of our pockets and organizing it on a table to now we would just take everything out of our pockets and just throw it up on the table and take a picture of that because that's more 
appealing now. I think that's cool. If you're somebody that, that hears this and is freaked out by it because you kind of mastered a style in the last decade and you're wondering if that will hold true in this new decade, will people still want it? And, and I have a twofold answer for that. Yes, there will be some people that want it, but will it be depreciating? 100%. That's kind of harsh, but that is, I believe that wholeheartedly. We've already seen so much movement in these first couple years of this decade that it's only gonna shoot off like a rocket. Um, so I think the, it's, yeah, it's kind of twofold. I, I, I think you should probably, if you are that person, that is, yeah, you should move forward for sure. I, I think that's our job as designers, specifically designers, artists, maybe. Designers specifically need to get in front of the client. We have to know how to create the thing that they're gonna want in five to 10 years so that whenever they have that epiphany, like, oh my word, our brand should look like this. We've already created it. No joke, if you're looking for like a jump off spot, like a spot to, to, to accept and participate in this new era, which now is a great time, by the way, you haven't missed it. We're still like very much in this. It's exciting because we're still like right here, like rising. It's a great time to get in. Genuinely go to Gucci Go to like their Instagram or something and, and search five years back. I use them all the time as reference and, and it's just incredible how far ahead they are mentally from the rest of the world. Just go check them out and then borrow some of their five to 10 year old designs because that's what we're about to see. All right, my friends, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you for letting me jabber about this topic that I love so much. I hope you all have an amazing week. I'll see you next Tuesday.